Hello and welcome to the next part of our tutorial. So we still have lots and lots to do. We have to fix up all the colliders. Um, but what we're going to look at in this tutorial is um, setting up a scoreboard. So this is uh, you know mega simplistic. So I've got um, I've created a, a new scene. So I've got file new scene. Into that scene, I have dragged this sprite here, which is just. Um, put together in Photoshop it's <clears throat> a blurred uh, component from the level on a white background uh, and then I've added I went right click UI add text and I've added uh, three pieces of text the first one is um, this here which is the scoreboard uh, it is literally a piece of text um, it does nothing it's not interactive I have another piece of text that says high score uh, and in a later tutorial uh, I'll show you how to have a basically like a login screen where you can put in your name and then your name will appear as a, a string in this field here um, and then we'll have uh, we'll do that next week we'll have um, you know player one player two player three score one score two score three uh, or you can do it up to ten if you want to whatever you want to so, uh, but for this we're just going to do one just to see the the Kind of base mechanic of it. Uh, so this uh, piece of text here, scoreboard, and this piece of text here, high score, these are not going to change. The piece of text that will change is again, it's just a normal UI piece of text, and it has the word score written in it, and we're going to change that piece of score, uh, or a piece of text, not piece of score. Um, so this is a text item, and inside the text item is a text field. So, uh, on that we have a script, and this is the script here, so we'll just go have a look at that. Now I've named it SB Score one um, just to keep in you know, with the rest of my um, naming. So I've got Level 1, Main Menu, and then Scoreboard, so SB is for Scoreboard. So I'll double click on that, load up Mono Develop, and then this is the script. So it is not terribly complicated, it is uh, one line basically well that's not true it's uh, three lines actually so let's have a look at our, our three lines so the first one is we need to add that add this in here so we need to add in the unity engine dot UI um, if we don't use this it won't know what a piece of text is so then we will get a compile error so in order to access functionality on the UI we need to tell unity to use the, the UI um, engine. Uh, the next thing we have here is our um, we're declaring a variable. We're saying that there is an object uh, that is a piece of text and we want to change the text component on that piece of text. Uh, and down here we're saying so actually no, we're just identifying the piece of text. So we're saying piece of text dot text so it's the text field that we want to change. And we've done this before in uh, this script here so this is exactly the same so this is what we want to change the text field which is this field here and what do we want to change it to we want to change it to this now let's just uh, have a little chat about this so this is uh, a set of functions uh, or a set of functionality built into unity called player preferences or player prefs and a player pref uh, just basically affords you the ability to record basic pieces of information. You can record an integer or a string. Um, you know, if you had a very small itinerary or, or um, a very small set of uh, user data, you could um, use player prefs. Um, the player prefs uh, are saved internally so if we were to export this as an app say for an android phone so it would be an apk file the this player pref data it isn't saved externally to that apk if we were to make a, a windows exe of this um it would all go inside the the actual file uh, so the apk file in the example of android so the it's not a separate like text file with data in it. Um, you can get if you want, if you want, there are lots of functions, lots of functionality in Unity to 
record uh, huge amounts of data, um, but they require you to read and write sort of database uh, files. Uh, maybe Ross will go through that with you in class. I think he, he'll do that after Christmas. But for small amounts of data, things like scoring, usernames, etc., uh, we can ho save that data internally in the file uh, using this system here, player prefs. So how does it work? Well, first of all, you declare you want to save a player pref, um, and then you can say, you know, let's put this down here. We could say um, set uh, set int. So that's a set integer, and then to call it back, we'd say uh, get int. So if I wanted to record it, I tell it to set the integer, and if I want to recall it recall it, I say get integer. If I had a float, say for example, a decimal, I can say um, set float and then uh, to call it back I can say uh, get float. So, you know, whatever the type of that is, it could be yeah, set string, get string, um, set bool, get bool. Okay, so let's just delete them. So in this instance here, we are saving a whole number, which is our score. So we're going to say get int. Now this here is the player score. Um, and we're going to say to string because we want to put it in a text field. Now this player score here could be anything. So I'm going to change this to uh, bife. And so we're going to say get the player preference called biffy and put it into this text file. So I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go over to my character script. Now in my character script, uh, we had already in the last uh, uh, class we had, we had looked at this public static variable called score. And what we had done with it is we had said that um, if I collide with an object with the tag coin, um, add one to the score. Now I've added this line in here, which is, you know, if I collide with the object coin, after I've added to the score, destroy that coin. So we're collision, it's a collision between ourselves and another object. So we're saying the other object, destroy it. So that'll get rid of our, our coin once we hit it once. Um, then the other thing that we want to do, apart from, we'll, we'll come back here and look, look at this in a minute, but in function update or void update, we're doing this here. We're saying player prefs set int player score. Now we just change that to bife. Uh, and I'm just doing that to illustrate it can be called anything. Uh, you'd probably, you know, if we're going to have a scoreboard with multiple scores, you'd call it, uh, you know, high score one, high score two, high score three, whichever, whatever uh, labeling you wanted to use. So I'm saying, record an integer using this functionality. The integer is going to be held in a variable called biffy. And what is the number I want to record? Well, it's this number here. I could say, uh, now I have no other integers here, but let's say this was a float. I could say player preferences set float biffy speed. And then in this variable biffy, I would be setting this float speed. So whenever my speed would be set to two, I could put anything in here, so long as I declare it as a float or a boolean, etc. So um, in this script here, in update, we're updating constantly the score into the player prefs. And then I've said here, if score is bigger than or equal to three, then load scene scoreboard. So let's just run through that one more time. So I say, if I collide with the coin, add one to my score. So if I hit three coins, that means I'll get a score of three. And if I have a score of three, then I'm going to load scene. And what I've done here is I've said, uh, constantly monitor this score here and save it into that variable. And over here on my scoreboard, I'm saying in function update, this and this, this doesn't have to be an update, this could be in start, because it only does it on load. Um, I'm saying player preferences, get int, biffy, 
the two string. So let's just see it working. Um, now we've one other small thing. Um, <coughs> sorry, to um, fix or not fix to identify, and that is uh, if you try and do this without loading. We have to go to build settings. I've already dragged and dropped my scoreboard scene in here. So if this was not active or not in the list, then we tried to run this, it wouldn't work. So let's go back to level one, and yeah, we'll save that there. So I'm gonna press play. And what we should see here is <coughs> using the public static variable that we had last time. So it's gonna, oops, zoom in on the player so you can see what's going on here. So, um, oh, hang on, let me fix this. So, air bubble two, we will just bring you forward and air bubble three so we can see what's going on. So, let's press play. So, when I move forward, I've got a, my public static variable um, is my score. So, I move forward and I hit bubble one. Bubble one is deleted. My score has risen to one. When I hit the next one, my score should go to 2, as it does, and the bubble has deleted itself. And then this one here, when I hit this one, I should change to the scoreboard, and I will have a score of 3, and then the score on the scoreboard should say 3. And there we go. So on this level here, this piece of text has this on it here and this is extracting it's going get uh, int biffy and then it's inserting that number that integer two string into that text field and you can see it says three here so um, that's it there's not a huge amount to it um, obviously our player script is getting more and more complex as we build on the functionality of it but each uh, individual component is fairly straightforward. Um, so we'll be going through this in class tomorrow. So if you do watch this video, you can ask me some questions and we'll um, get it working. And as I said, uh, next week what we'll do is we'll develop this further and we'll make um, a, more, a fuller scoreboard with maybe three or four or five places in it. Okay, so that's enough for now.